Hello and welcome to another Stellarian Games video. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to make a gatehouse. Uh, this gatehouse is just a very simple structure um, in terms of it, it's all together. There's no extra pieces to it. It can be plopped down on the table to be used as part of a gaming session. It does have a, uh, a moving drawbridge on the inside if you want to use that. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a nice detailed gatehouse. Uh, I set it kind of with this um, sandstone looking structure meant to be set in kind of a, a dry, arid, desert kind of setting. So this gatehouse uh, is designed for miniatures. It's all scaled for, appropriately for miniatures to be played on. And uh, a, a really simple interaction for players to come up to and, and interact. So let's go to the table and see how this one is done. Okay, for this craft, we're going to use 3 quarter inch XPS foam and start measuring out the size of the overall tower. I use that candle um, holder, the glass candle holder for a large circle. I didn't have a circle a tool that would be large enough to trace, so I started using that. And then using the circle tracing for the other arches as well. Then using a, an Ulfa knife and cutting out all of the components and getting it ready to be uh, put together. Using a hot wire cutter, cutting out the arch, cutting out the large arch and the small arch. I'm going to save both pieces for use later on. Okay, now I'm measuring out the top face of the, the tower. This I wanted to have a unique curve to it, so I just used that uh, lampshade, plastic lampshade, and curve, uh, traced on that curve, and then took it to the hot wire cutter and, and cut out that entire curve. Then on a 45 degree slant, I'm cutting the bottom section of it to give it kind of a support uh, slant. Using chain to texture it, uh, this will give it a nice kind of stucco stone look. And then using those circle tracing as well and tracing on a bunch of small arcs, these will be cut out and to form kind of small ridge archways for the bottom of that um, outer facing. Using the hot wire cutter and cutting out all of those little arcs. And then along the top side of that tower, I'm using a knife and carefully cutting in at about a quarter inch, uh, leaving a quarter inch wall and then tracing in the backside as well. This will create a curved recessed wall uh, for use later on. Then uh, measured out and now cutting out the little uh, gaps for the top of the wall, crenellations. And then cutting out kind of a window shape and making a whole bunch of thin slices of these outer window uh, stones. Using a knife, I'm cutting out a small inner uh, window section and then a pen to trace on stonework onto the face of all of these windows. These I'll just glue onto the outer side of the, the wall and it'll form kind of a, a nice a visual bump out for a window. Now using an X-Acto knife on this inner arch and tracing in all of the stonework with the knife and with a pen to give it a nice deep texture and then I'll recess a lot of those stones to give it some nice texture as well. Now starting to form the outer walls as well. For the outer walls, I'm tracing on more of those small arcs, some for the crenellations, some for support arches. This one, I'm just creating one pattern and cutting out all of the arcs on a single pass. And then uh, I'll cut it in half to have a matching two pairs, basically. Now on the back side of the tower, I wanted a kind of an opening with a railing system. So I'm going to cut that 
section that I, the, the square that I cut out of the back and cut it in half to form a thinner railing. Now I traced on a pattern and using an X-Acto knife, I'm cutting out the large um, arches. And then for the smaller railing arches, I'm gonna use the hot wire cutter to cut out all of those individually. This will form a nice, um, visually interesting uh, back railing to this tower. Now on the sides, I wanted some doors cut in, so I just tr uh, traced out those and cut those in with a hot wire cutter as well. Along the top side of the, the wall, I wanted a stone walkway. So just kind of trace that out. Now I'm gluing that arc that we had put in later on or earlier on and leaving it kind of recessed in a little bit. And now I'm starting to assemble the other parts of this tower. Now creating the stairway for the inside of that top tower. Just using an X-Acto knife to cut out small stairs and then hot wiring the doors out and then trimming them thin tracing on some lines for texture on those doors and cutting out a quick outer frame for the doors using some tacky glue to glue those into place and then hot glue to glue them inside of the walls. Hot gluing that directly to it. And now that's ready to be set in for the inside of that upper tower. Now I'm using that same X-Acto knife and pen method to give texture to the whole top section of the tower and starting to assemble that uh, on the sides as well. Gluing those top sections to the side walls and gluing that top front face to the tower as well. I'm using tacky glue to glue all of those little windows into place. Now the inside of the tower wanted to have some murder holes in the floor and some window slits on the inside of that as well. So I'm just adding that before gluing those uh, pieces into place. The inner walls, I also wanted to leave a little bit of a, a small recess for where the drawbridge would uh, pivot. This is going to be the actual uh, drawbridge and cut out some real thin slices and using those on either side of that drawbridge pattern. Just using a knife to cut out the outer frame and then texturing the actual door. On the other side, I'm going to use a little bit different pattern for the uh, cutout section. So I have small rectangles cut out of it instead of the kind of the cross uh, support pattern. Then using some tacky glue and gluing those into place on that door. Now using hot glue to form that inner section of the tower. This will be where the, the doorway goes through. And then gluing on a, a small dowel to the drawbridge. Now the back support columns, I've just traced on some small arcs and a circle cutting through on the one side and cutting those circles out. And then adding a bunch of stone tracery around those and cutting in a small hole, this will form the pivot point uh, for another dowel to uh, draw the drawbridge up. 
gluing those into place with hot glue and gluing on a, a little small uh, top floor. Now gluing on the side walls. Creating more crenellations for the top of the tower. And then cutting that in half so it'll be the right thickness. Texturing that to match the rest of the tower. And then gluing those into place. Now I glued on some small little walkways to continue the tower walkways to the wall. Now for the back dowel, I'm just dipping it in some stain so it has a nice dark brown look. And these are some uh, small uh, wooden pieces that will act as the winch points. Now starting to paint the inside of this with a black paint and Mod Podge mix. I wanted to get all of the inside painted before gluing the rest of it together. So giving a quick brown or tan dry brush to give it kind of a sandstony look. And then painting those inner doors dark brown along with the uh, stairway leading up. Now I'm ready to glue that into place. So the back wall is now firmly fixed to the tower. And starting the rest of the painting process. So this is the black paint and Mod Podge. It's going to go over the entire project, uh, leaving that tan as well. So all of the walls are getting this kind of khaki tan dry brush. Uh, this is a really nice uh, effect for kind of a desert building. I started with a dark brown undercoat for the, all of the stonework. And I was thinking it would be kind of nice to leave it in this dark brown. It looked pretty slick with that dark brown look. Um, but then it just felt a little bit out of place the way that I wanted it. So I ended up changing up and went with a, a white dry brush over the whole thing. And that really made the piece pop in a, in a way that I wasn't really anticipating. But this is a, in, an interesting uh, decision to kind of pivot midstream. Now for the drawbridge itself, um, I have a dark brown undercoat with some black highlighting on the on the metal. This is just another tan dry brush over the, the rest of the wood to, to make that wood pop a little bit more. Now I'm gluing on some string to uh, the end of the drawbridge and that'll be where it gets lifted up. Now that dowel that we stained earlier on, getting that ready to get put into place, just gluing those wooden pieces uh, and positioning them and letting that glue dry. And once that's dry and feeding the string through the little holes that we had cut in um, so that the drawbridge would be able to be drawn up. And then using a very small tweezers, kind of forcing the end of that string into some drill holes I made on those wooden pieces and letting those dry as well. Using some thick chipboard, cutting out some small strips. These will be glued into place to hold those uh, pivot points for the drawbridge. Just using hot glue and gluing those into place. And then a little L bracket to make sure that it doesn't slide side to side either. All right, there is the finished product. This is a standalone piece again, so the walls don't come off or anything. But the drawbridge does uh, get raised and lowered with that little back winch uh, accessible on the back side. And all of the top surfaces and walls can have miniatures on them um, and all of the lovely interior details are are visible from the backside and really help make this piece pop. Uh, I hope you like this video. 
If you do, please hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.